Welcome in to the Michigan Football Report, baby. It is April 5th, and we are back and better than ever. I am James Yoder, the undisputed king of Michigan football media, live from our new Delaware Michigan Football Report studios. The old studio under construction. We all know what that's about, but we are here bringing you all of the best Michigan football news and rumors around Schembechler Hall since you last saw me a couple months back. Let's get into it. The new offense, Josh Gaddis, hired from Alabama, their co-OC, wasn't really the play caller, more the wide receivers coach, hashtag slash passing game coordinator, Josh Gaddis, 35 years old, a signal along with uh, Anthony Campanelli, however you pronounce his name, on the defensive side. Harbaugh's two big hires this offseason, the coaching staff going young, guys in their mid-30s. He is 35 years old, spent 2018 implementing that high-powered attack Alabama offense that saw the best wide receiver in the country, the Heisman frontrunner up until really the last week of the season in Tua Tungavailoa, spent four years at Penn State with James Franklin. Prior to that, we all saw the amazing things that offense did, specifically the wide receivers for sure, in 2016, 2017, Big Ten champs in 16, 2017, right on the cusp of making the college football playoffs. Josh Gaddis, Going to make a big impact, I think, and is talking about a power spread offense. Back in early January, when he was hired by Jim Harbaugh, I was the first guy to tell you what kind of offense they're going to run. The power spread, what does it exactly mean? It's not the same offense that Alabama ran last year. It is more reminiscent of the offense that Ohio State ran in 2015. Oh, by the way, with one Ed Warner, Michigan's offensive line coach, as the Ohio State co-offensive coordinator. It is very hurry up. It is very shotgun heavy, and it is intensely wide receiver heavy. You will see four or five, or four, three or four wide receivers on every single set that Michigan runs. Very little two back. That's why Ben Mason has been getting some running back snaps, also some snaps on the defensive line. And the man that everyone wants to know, how will he thrive in this offense, Was grew up in a spread offense in high school at IMG Academy, senior year, two years at Ole Miss. Shea Patterson, in my opinion, was not utilized by Pep Hamilton the way he should have last year. Underwhelming stats with only 2,600 yards, 22 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. Kind of going out with a, you know a little bit of a you know dud at the end of the year. The Michigan wide receiver crew, big time playmakers. I think along with Alabama, maybe a couple other schools, one of the best three or four wide receiving crews in America coming back. Let's take a look at the wide receiver returning leaders. DPJ sitting out this spring. We'll get to that in a few moments. Nico Collins also injured, emerged big time as a redshirt freshman, really Michigan's go-to man down the field and in the red zone. Then you've got Sean McCune as the third leading receiver from a reception standpoint. And then Oliver Martin, little Oliver Martin out of the state of Iowa as the fourth leading receiver coming back. Now, Tariq Black, we didn't mention there. Ronnie Bell, we didn't mention there. Bell came on towards the end of the year. I think he's kind of maybe higher in the pecking order in some regards than Oliver Martin. And of course, Tariq Black, if healthy, missing the last two seasons with a broken foot, like on either side, actually, one left, one right. He'll be back, he'll be in the starting lineup. But Josh Gass, power spread. Expect Michigan to have four wide receivers on 75% of their plays. Less use of the tight ends, but when the tight ends are there, get them off the line, spread out wide a little bit more. So think about what Alabama and Clemson looked like in the first half of that national title game. That's where you're going to be getting from Michigan if Jim Harbaugh keeps his grimy paws off that offense and lets Josh Gass do his thing. You might see Michigan wide receivers have numbers like this. Jerry Judy, number one wide receiver in the country last year, won the Belitnikoff Award, 68 catches, 1,315 yards. And so I want to know from you guys, me to you, James Yoder, the undisputed king of Michigan football media, to you, the most uh, tenacious Michigan football audience in America of the Michigan Football Report. Will Michigan have an Oklahoma slash Ohio State offensive approach in 2019? I put this out on my Twitter a week or two ago, and I was surprised with how many of you thought that Jim Harbaugh would actually open it up, run hurry up, go for the kill, throw 60 times in the game, or 70 like Ohio State did against Purdue. I think he threw 73 times, was it? Will Michigan open it up next year, be Ohio State in 2018 style? Oklahoma for basically forever. Type one for yes, type two for no. I wanna know from you guys. Get in the comments now. Let me know what you think about the Michigan football offense in 2019.
you may notice a little bit different of a setup here in the Michigan Football Report studio. I'm gonna duck down here. I'm in Delaware, baby. We are in Delaware. We're gonna take this thing all over the country this year. That's how good the show did in 2018. We've got the budget to take the show wherever you guys want. You want me to broadcast? I don't know, from MGM Studios, maybe uh, maybe the uh, the Mount Rushmore, or something like that, we can take it there. So I'm in Delaware right now. If you're in Delaware, give me a shout out. We can meet up for beers this weekend, but also give me a shout out. Where should we do the next show? Because we can take this thing to the moon. Who knows? I'm in Delaware and that is the word on our new set. With that, obviously, this is a little uh, reference to the movie Wayne's World, where they are using a green screen coma key going from New York to Texas to Delaware. What is your favorite SNL-based movie? Some competitive, some contenders before the show that we talked about. Obviously, Wayne's World, certainly Night at the Roxbury. Somebody threw out Coneheads. It was jeered and, uh, and a few cheers out there. Want to know from you guys, though, Saturday Night Live-based movies, very popular in the mid to late 90s into the early 2000s. What is your favorite SNL-based movie? Because me, I'm in Delaware. Wayne's World. All right, let's keep it moving on the Michigan Football Report. Back to the number one segment, the segment everyone loves, that Detective Dave and the guys uh, 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 up, the, uh, up the hill at Michigan Football don't understand. The rumors round up. I'm not going sourcing these stories, folks. These are things that I see out there that people are talking about, and I, being the most connected, the undisputed king of Michigan football media, I talk to people. How likely is the rumor that you're reading on an obscure message board or blog that gets 100 you know, page views a month? That's what I'm here for, the truth. So let's take a look. Brandon Peters, is he moving on? I've been talking about this one for a year and a half, three and out. Brandon Peters, I'm giving this one three Harbaugh heads because he is going to graduate next month, maybe end of April. I don't know when exactly Michigan's commencement is. Brandon Peters came in in Jim Harbaugh's first full recruiting class, or really his first, I guess it was his first full recruiting class. He's going to finish up his third year at Michigan, came in as an early enrollee, so he's really been there for three and a half years, starter for five games in 2017 after Wilton Spate got hurt, and John O'Corn was the most NFL-ready quarterback in the draft, but also a terrible starter for Michigan football. Really underwhelming stats, three and two as a starter, Came in in the, in the Purdue game, I believe it was, and then got hurt, wasn't able to play in the Ohio State game. Lost Wisconsin when he got hurt. Lost the bowl game where he threw the ball actually 44 times. About 40% of his total passes in all of his games last in 2017 were in that bowl game. Lost 20-44. Four touchdowns, two interceptions. As I kind of think 2017 was his year to claim the starting role for Michigan. So let's take a look at his stats compared to Shea Patterson's stats. Both members of the 2016 recruiting class. Patterson obviously for Ole Miss, but the same year in college. College. 672 yards for Peters to 2,600 for Shea Patterson. 22 touchdowns, seven picks for Patterson to four and two for Brandon Peters. And of course, a 10 and three record for Shea Patterson to a three and two record for Brandon Peters. I think it's pretty much a guarantee. I don't want to put four Harbaugh heads on it because I haven't talked to Brandon specifically about this yet. Yet. But three Harbaugh heads. Don't expect him to be in the Michigan football roster next year. I think it could be a Big Ten team. Keep an eye out for some of those Indiana schools, Purdue, <laughs> Indiana, uh, et cetera. Maybe a Mac school if he wants a guaranteed starting job. But Brandon Peters, fourth in the depth chart at best right now, and could be fifth in the depth chart with Cade McNamara on campus now as an early enrollee. So that is the word on Brandon Peters. Let's keep this bad boy moving. But before we do, before we do, I want to give you guys a little glimpse into what I've been working on the last 45 minutes or so. I created an Instagram account just for you, okay? I'm sick of these, some of these people on Twitter. It's a really toxic environment, okay? I am all about positivity. It's 2019, folks. We need to be zen. Let's go to Instagram where no one has ever said a bad word about anything. I'm going to be putting all my news there. I've already got like 150 followers somehow. One post at Michigan Football Report on Instagram. You'll see the picture like this. It's me, not in front of the Delaware though, but maybe I'll change it to this photo. Can we get a screenshot? Can we get a screenshot? All right, follow me on Instagram, at Michigan Football Report, all my juicy stuff. It's going there, as long as you guys follow me. I need to get to like three, 400 followers before I start giving that some attention. So go ahead and do it right now. Next up is the Michigan Football Report Harbaugh Head Rumor Meter. If you haven't seen the show before, where have you been? But I need to explain this because some of you out there just don't understand what the fuck I'm talking about sometimes. Total zero Harbaugh heads, totally false. 
fake news. That means it is like a letter that is screenshotted over the internet. Totally false fake news. One Harbaugh head, small shred of tooth, two Harbaugh heads, people are talking. Three Harbaugh heads means it's pretty likely. If I give it the four Harbaugh heads, that means I put my name behind it, you SOBs. F-A-C-K, that's how Jim Harbaugh spells it. That is how we spell it here. The Michigan Football Report on Chat Sports. Keeping it real. Four Harbaugh heads, three Harbaugh heads, two, one, zero. You know the rule. I'm not making these stories up. I'm giving you the validity of the story. So just make sure you know that. All right, four injured starters. I'm giving it two Harbaugh heads, right? And let's just clarify. There's a lot to unpack with this story. Jim Harbaugh talked to the media, some of the big, big J journalists, the guys that want to spend three, four hours like Stay Puff Sam, sitting around waiting for Jim to talk, see what he says, which is basically a nothing burger. But he did throw out some quotes, and guys like Stay Puff Sam put it out there. Diamond Peoples Jones might miss the season. Michael Dwumfor is going to miss the season. And then it comes out later on, that's fake news, but for sure there are four starters that have missed all of spring ball with injuries, some of winter conditioning. Michael Dwumfor, starting defensive tackle last year, the wide receiving duo of Nico Collins and Donovan Peoples-Jones, and then Lavert Hill. They haven't expanded on it, but Lavert Hill and Nico Collins reportedly, according to Jim Harbaugh, got a procedure, both of them, right after the bowl game and are recovering nicely. But Michael Dwumfor, Donovan Peoples-Jones. Here's what Jim Harbaugh had to say on those injuries. Two, two guys, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Michael Dwumfor, looks like they have more serious injuries than we previously thought. People said, well, what do you mean, Jim? Is it just for the spring or could it go further than that? Jim Harbaugh says, I don't know, they could miss. They could, and you know, miss time this fall. When asked, could they miss time this fall? Well, what injuries do they have, Jim? What's the, what's the problem? Why aren't they playing? Diamond is a soft tissue injury. I have no idea what that means. A groin injury. It kind of sounds a little bit uh, Jim's toe in the line there in this area. Soft tissue groin injury. I know what that means. Michael, he had a torn plantar fascia right before the bowl game. So four starters injured. Give it two Harbaugh heads. And not because they're not injured right now, but because of the depth of the fake news went out there. Jim Harbaugh basically says, hey, Michael Dwumfor, he got injured right before the bowl game. And so people on Twitter lose their minds on Wednesday, right? Let's just take a look at one tweet in particular coming up. U underscore M247, just the first one I came across. Some really bad news is shared by Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh. The wide receiver, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Michael Dwumfor, might both have season engine injuries. Because remember, Harbaugh said Michael Dwumfor hurt that, he got that injury right before the bowl game. Or, or did he? Is that what he said? That's what I heard. What did Michael Dwumfor have to say about it? Let's take a look. I did not tear my planta fascia. We should look that up, guys. What does that mean? I have no idea what that means, but I'm going to find out just for you guys. In the bowl game, he misspelled it. That's not our misspelling. He, he corrected himself there. I tore it against Mer Mer Maryland? Wasn't that like in early November before bowl game? And so Michael Dwumfor actually comes out and basically calls Jim Harbaugh fake news. He says, hey, I, I you know, tore this thing in the ninth game of the year, eighth game of the year. You're saying I did it in January or late December? That's not true, Jim. So unsolicited tweet, the PR department in Michigan, who nothing gets past them, you know, hey, you got to watch what your boys are tweeting, calling the coach fake news. And then one of the great falls on Twitter, Rick Dunaway, was one of many, many thousands of tweets like, what the hell? And this is in a kind of a, a, a line of tweets by Rick, basically saying, hey, Jim, quit lying about injuries. If you're going to talk about injuries, at least be honest. Harbaugh forever has not talked about injuries. He's, he's working through something. Uh, uh, you know, we're going we're to get him back in the field soon. But Rick Dunaway says, look, and, and the guy in that tweet was Jim Harbaugh. He's lying about players. I'm not going to say Jim Harbaugh is lying, but if you're going to give injury news and your players can go straight to the fans' social media, you have got to be accurate. And some people have said, look, this could be Jim Harbaugh trying to motivate them. He talked a lot about a lot of players like Mike St. Ristol and some other players in the defensive line like Donovan Jeter, Ben Mason even at the de defensive line. Maybe he's trying to motivate those guys by calling them out. Later in that quote, he also said something like, look, they might be on the field, paraphrasing here, but only they're going to know what their body can hold. So maybe Jim Harbaugh playing a little bit of the mind games with his players, but Michael Dwumfor wasn't having any of it. And as such, he came out and said, that's not true at all. I want to tell you guys about the My TV Choice app. We started working with these guys a couple weeks ago, and it has changed my life. I'm watching March Madness games. They come up on, commercials come up on screen. Boom, my phone says My TV. No, block those commercials. Let's watch awesome sports updates. 
the latest in MLB, NFL Draft, NBA, some trivia questions, all with the My TV Choice app. Download it now on iPhone or Android. Hook it up to your Wi-Fi. Your smart TV does the rest. You'll never watch commercials during a sporting event again. And you can get going with it this Saturday and Monday for the Final Four and the title game. MyTVChoice.com. Download it today. iPhone or Android if you're one of those people. <laughs> Come on. All right. Let's keep this bad boy moving. Back to Mike Sanristol, Sanristol, I'm not sure how to exactly pronounce it, but uh, it's a great name nonetheless. Jim Harbaugh went on and on and on about Sanristol on his podcast on Tuesday, talking about being in the two deep, maybe a starter at wide receiver, competing for the starting job in the two deep at punt returner, and then being second string in kick returner. And I'm just like, what, what world is this? Starter, wide receiver? What happened to Peoples Jones, Tariq Black, Nico Collins, Ronnie Mother and Bell, with Oliver Martin. And then I think to myself, wait a second, wait a second. Next time a cornerback, as I mentioned, Lavert Hill. Another motivating t- factor, one I don't believe, but I am calling this one fake news. Okay, the Mike Sandrisol hype train needs to just, just tighten it up a little bit here, folks. He's a true freshman, hasn't even been to his high school graduation, which will happen in a couple months, hasn't even been to prom yet, early enrollee. He is not going to be a starting wide receiver. This is Jim Harbaugh, you know, talking crazy, honestly, maybe trying to motivate Donovan Peoples-Jones because he said St. Ristol could be the starter at punt returner. Well, we know who the damn starter at punt returner is. It's Donovan Peoples-Jones, all right? But Harbaugh said, basically, he's doing a great job. St. Ristol is in the two deep at wide receiver, punt returner, kick returner this spring. But I will say this about Mike St. Ristol. Taking advantage of the opportunities given to him this spring, while he should still be in high school as an early enrollee with Nico Collins, and with Donovan Peoples-Jones out, and taking advantage of those reps at punt returner, wide receiver, and then, of course, kick returner. Obviously, we know Chris Evans is out. Some other players have left the team this year. A lot of opportunities for this young three-star wide receiver, 5'10", 175 pounds, very under-recruited, was, was committed to Virginia Tech for a long time, but eventually ended up at the Michigan Wolverines, which I told you about all spring long. But what does Josh Gaddis have to say about him? We all know Harbaugh's spread a little bit of the uh, the, the truth, uh, you know, fudging the truth a little bit. But Josh Gaddis, fair and balanced, doesn't ever fudge the truth. Basically says this: sometimes in order to teach, you must show. Yada yada yada. Head and eyes, flips. Basically teaching guys over Twitter how to be a wide receiver. And you'll see in this video who's looking the best at wide receiver for the University of Michigan. Okay, take a look at Gas here. Hey, hey, this is how you run a quick out right here. So we're going to see a couple of these guys, that Oliver Martin, some other players, uh, Jake McCurry, et cetera, these guys. Look at St. Mr. right there. He's like, I am the next coming Reggie Bush. Later on, boom. That's why it's open every day of the week. That is a touchdown right there. If you're playing a real game, he's going to gonna tiptoe up that sideline. And Jim Harbaugh comes and he basically says, look at that speed, baby. That is amazing. Mikey, just keep doing what he's doing. He's got an intensity about him. But when he's practicing, when he's in meetings, really hungry, he is doing a great job. That is Jim Harbaugh. That is Josh Gass on Mike St. Ristol. Obviously, he has a great attitude. Obviously, he's quick. But let's take a look at this depth chart. Collins, DPJ, Tariq Black, those are your starters. I'm putting Oliver Martin there as the fourth wide receiver just because it's his third year on campus. One of the three or four leading returning receivers on the team. Backing up that Ronnie Bell. Uh, and you've got you know Nate Schoenel. I put uh, St. Ristol and Giles Jackson as the backup slot. One of those guys could get wide receivers uh, reps in the first string. But this is on a four wide receiver set. So you got to step back a little bit. The slot is no longer the three at Michigan. It is the four. They're running a three wide receiver set every single time. So... Don't necessarily think Mike Sanders still is getting starter snaps once fall camp comes around. But I want to know from you guys, I put this on Twitter the other day, and it was a, it was a, a runaway win for one man named Nico Collins. But I want to know from you guys, who will lead Michigan in receiving touchdowns in 2019? On Twitter, I put Donovan Peoples-Jones. Tariq Black returning after two years of injury, but has shown very well in his uh, in his times playing at Michigan. Or, of course, Nico Collins, Michigan's go-to man in the red zone. Let me know. Put in the comments on YouTube, on Michigan Football by Chat, Michigan Wolverines by Chat Sports, on Facebook Live, my Twitter account, and the Michigan Football Report podcast on Apple. Let me know. We'll see what you guys think and go from there. Speaking of YouTube, we're in Delaware. Speaking of YouTube. 
go ahead and subscribe. We had this bad boy going for a couple months, got 15, 1,600 subscribers, putting some of our content on there, but we're gonna put all of our content on there going forward. YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. I call up my friends at YouTube. I said, hey, somebody else got Michigan TV. You give it to Yoder. They said, no problem. That guy is canceled. He is off YouTube. Yoder, you got Michigan TV. Go subscribe. You get an alert every time we have a new show. We're going to be putting all kinds of content on there going forward. Michigan TV, the place to go on YouTube for Michigan football content. And speaking of Michigan football, let's think forward. 2019, are the Wolverines, are they going undefeated, dog? Are they winning this whole thing, going to the, the playoffs, going to the national title game? Well, they are favored in every game they play, according to Bet Online, who's one of these bookies that's going to put out some future games, get the, get the juices flowing for spring football, get people talking about them. And the man of the hour, when it comes to Twitter at least, is a man named Johnny Detroit. It's my dad almost named me Johnny Detroit Yoder, but he actually got the name. Not sure if Detroit's his last name or if it's a monkey. Nevertheless, part of the big time media. Bet Online puts out college football odds. Michigan's favorite in every single game. You see some big spreads. Notre Dame, eight and a half, 13 against Michigan State, six and a half versus Ohio State. They haven't won you know, in eight years since 2011 against Ohio State. Let's take a look at that schedule. Could Michigan go undefeated? And will they be favored in every game? Because I believe they were favored in every game in 2018 as it came down to it. Maybe not Notre Dame. I think the game time spread was Notre Dame by one. Start off with Middle Tennessee. Second game, that's a really good Army team. I believe won 11 games, maybe 12 games, like 11 and 2, something like that. Army, big time bowl win. Bye in week three, which is kind of weird. Then we only highlighted the five games that have odds out for them. Michigan going on the road against a Wisconsin team that had an underwhelming season in 2018. I think they lost five games. Michigan, six point favorite on the road against Wisconsin as we stand here today in early April. Keep it moving. Outside of that game, you've got Iowa. You're on the road to Illinois. Then you're going on the road against Penn State. New quarterback coming in. We don't know who it's going to be yet. Six and a half point favorites. Head back home the next week, October 26th. Michigan, eight and a half point favorite, October 26th against Notre Dame at home. Then you're heading on the road to Maryland. Coming on the home stretch of the season, November 9th, you've got a bye. Head back home, 13 point favorite against Michigan State, November 16th. Head to Indiana, which I feel like we were talking about before the show. Indiana has been Michigan's opponent before Ohio State, I feel like every year for the past 20 years. Nevertheless, going to happen again this year, which I don't think is a good thing for Michigan as we saw Indiana's defense offense kind of expose Michigan's defense. And then a six and a half point favorite at home against Ohio State, November 30th, 2019, could be the day that makes or breaks Jim Harbaugh's future, his career as Michigan's head football coach. We'll take a look at his record. Top of the screen, 2015, start off that loss versus Utah, then had seven wins in a row, six, seven wins in a row, Devastating loss against Michigan State. A few more wins. Crushed by Ohio State. Big bowl win. 10-3 good year. 10-3 in 2016, but lost those last two. Terrible year down, you know. Three straight losses in the year in 2017. And then last year, you lose one, you win 10 straight, you lose your last two. Little bit of a little bit of a, a theme going on there. Losing against Ohio State all four years, then losing three straight years in the bowl game. So you've ended the last three years with two straight losses, three straight in 2017. That is the word on Jim Harbaugh. Year five, if he doesn't win these games, especially Notre Dame and Ohio State against home, at home, goes to 0-5 against Ohio State, 0-2 against Notre Dame, that is going to be a sad state of affairs for the Michigan football program five years into the Jim Harbaugh era. Before we go, if you watch this on Friday, get ready to do it tomorrow. If you watch this on Saturday, do it now so you can watch for this final four games. My TV Choice app. Download now. Sync it to your Wi-Fi. It just takes over your TV. It says, oh, oh, commercial, commercial break. Let's get some chat, sports content, NFL, NBA draft, all that. Download it today, mytvchoice.com. We'll be coming back with it at you with some more Michigan football rumors and recruiting next week. Hey there, Michigan football fans. Thanks so much for watching the Michigan Football Report. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We've got Michigan football news, rumors, recruiting information, and inside access to the Michigan football program. You ready for another Michigan football video? I got you hooked up right here. Go Blue.